What's going on? It's Jason Heath. We're talking today with three people who are behind the Ultimate Music Business Summit. Now, I was a part of this event last year. Looking forward to it coming up again. And you're going to be hearing from Garrett Hope, Heidi K. Begay, and Arthur Brewer. Hope you enjoy it. Garrett, was this your idea last year initially? I think so, right? Yeah, it was. I uh, Obviously, the shutdowns that happened during the pandemic really threw everyone in our industry just it demolished many sectors right live performances went away there were lots of people who um lost the opportunity to make multiple tens of thousands of dollars i had performances canceled and commissions got delayed so i mean it was a big deal and you know me like i want to help other people so i just had this vision one day of creating a kind of a conference a summit type thing where we can give actionable pieces of advice to people so that they can manage it. And one of my taglines for the summit last year was to create your own stimulus package. <laughs> so, you know, build your business, take it seriously. Here's some strategies you can do so that you can make sure that you can keep a roof over your head and food in the fridge and all of that. Uh, but I had the, the, I started creating it around Thanksgiving and then the event happened first week of January. So I had four or five weeks to build the whole thing. It was insane. Um, I have learned, I, I think maybe I'm growing in wisdom, but I built a team with Arthur and Heidi and we've given ourselves about six months. We've been working on it for a while. Slowly things are ramping up. We're about ready to, um, open the ticket sales and we're off. We have 34 presentations plus a keynote. It's going to be amazing. And, and so it's, it's over three days this yeah. time, right? I can't remember what it was last year. What was the time span for it? Was it similar? It was very similar. It was three okay. days. In fact, the same dates. The leap year happened to make it so it's the same dates, <laughs> January 6, 7, and 8. And uh, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, this time we're going to do it over a different platform. So... Um, an, uh, some platform that will allow us to do live presentation and then like breakout rooms so that people can actually ask the presenters questions, more of a Q&A and live environment. There's also going to be a space for vendors to put booths up and, our, and hopefully some sponsors. Um, and I know that your podcast is one of our sponsors, so we're really grateful for that, Jason. Thank you so much. But it's going to be uh, really good. Uh, so two tracks simultaneously, so it's going to feel more like a conference. So you can choose which ones you want to go to. Of course, we'll sell a, a VIP pass, which will allow you access to the recordings of everything so you can get all the information for all time. Which is super helpful for something like this because just the the quantity of of what's going on at an event like like this it's it's and that to be able to go back and access it is awesome and I, I realize I guess we're going here I never know how these podcasts go so um I, Garrett is <clears throat> no stranger to the podcast he's I think we first connected maybe 2016 or something crazy like that and right. had uh, and hung out in person a few times here in Chicago and so and then Heidi's been on the pod oh, but I'll, I'll finish introducing Garrett so host of the portfolio. <laughs> composer and wonderful composer if you're looking for commission uh just and, and a bass player as well so if, yeah if but i'm not such a wonderful bass player I, <laughs> I i'm not in the same league of you i i started writing music and making that my focus so okay and and then heidi's been on the podcast as well but heidi maybe just give yourself a quick introduction you haven't been on quite as much as garrett Sure. Yeah. For your listeners, just to refresh them, our episode through the Food360 podcast was episode 125. So you and I connected about a year ago. So that was an amazing conversation. But anyways, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I live there with my husband, my fur babies. I'm a flutist educator, nonprofit organizer, and podcaster of the Flute360 podcast. And I help musicians thrive to feel empowered and to find their unique boys on and off the stage. Great. And then Arthur, I know you live in Portland, uh, but uh, uh, aside from that, uh, just let folks know about your background. Well, I do live in Portland also with my husband and my fur babies. So uh, live here, uh, live on a floating home. My music is published through Floating Home Music, which is floatinghomemusic.com. And I'm a composer. I've been composing longer than I've been doing anything else in my life. I really like composing for live performances, which uh, there was a dent put in that over the last year and a half, but that was, has been my focus. 
And uh, I also have a web development company. I've had that for about 20 years now. And we help people not be stressed out about dealing with websites and the internet. Well, that is a major pain point for musicians, I know for sure. Some of my some of my friends that have been talking about making a website for almost 20 years, it's still still not out there. So <laughs> I might have to- Have say, them call me. Say, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll do. Well, this is a, obviously a great team. And I remember, boy, uh, Garrett, maybe uh, just a little over a year ago, I guess, sitting down and filming some video. I did a session on video last time. And I remember yeah. going through and breaking that out. So that that was great. Um, but and th you have so many people involved. It's kind of hard to talk about everything that's happening but can you maybe share some some of what people might get or or give us maybe the sales pitch for why you should do this i mean i think it's cool i'm involved but uh for my my listeners uh what, what would they get out of this right so the the idea here is to provide actionable content for the listeners and what what we mean by that is that you could listen to any presentation and then walk away and start applying some strategies to what it is you do. And underlying all of that is this philosophy that we are small business owners as musicians. Whether you're a full-time gigging musician or you have a teaching studio, or even if you teach at the university level, in some way, if you're filing a Schedule C, if you receive 1099 income, you are a small business. And so there's things you can do to um, increase the amount of money you're making, lower your taxation, but then reach more people, make a bigger difference in the world with the music you make. And so there's going to be people like you talking about video production, YouTube strategies, social media strategies, uh, some PR and marketing kind of fundamental stuff that's going to get covered. I'm going to be covering some more business type topics like finding opportunities. I'm going to let Arthur and Heidi talk about what they're going to do. Uh, we also have a keynote presenter, Drew X. Coles, who teaches at Columbia and a few other places in New York City, and he runs a thriving music business. He and his wife have uh, a business that does primarily wedding music is my understanding but they're operating in the multiple like hundreds of six figures sending bands all the way across the country actually so this guy teaches music entrepreneurship and it's going to be incredible that's great i can't wait to check it out uh yeah. yeah yeah heidi and arthur let us let us know whoever wants to go next uh what what your involvement is going to be Okay, so right now, being an executive committee member through uh, Garrett's summit, um, I have been working a lot with outreach, PR work, doing some marketing, tracking down corporate sponsorships. So it's been exciting. I've been learning a lot from these two gentlemen. And aside from that, I am also going to be presenting. And I'm really passionate about this topic because a lot of people have been coming to me with this pain point. A lot of people want to um, grow their network. They want to bring people into their orbit and scale their creative projects, but they don't know how to. So my big spiel, the thing that I have really been preaching from the rooftops this past year is you need people. We cannot do it alone. We have to build relationships. So my topic is all about that. You're going to build relationships. You're going to initiate, cultivate, and scale. So that's my presentation through the summit. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. And for me, uh, again, I'm helping with the website. I'm, we just started doing the social media outreach, uh, and that's going to be a whole lot of fun for this as well. Uh, and I'm going to be presenting on basically you know, creating your own residency and the idea that there are, there are so many ensembles out there that we can work with, and, there's in, and so many situations where an ensemble can work with a composer and a composer can work with an ensemble. Um, and you can create a residency that doesn't have, doesn't have to be expensive for the, for the ensemble and can fit to what you want to do with that ensemble anyway. So it's, it's really kind of exciting thing that we've started working on and Garrett and I are going to be both presenting on that together because he's used the same model. Well, I think it's a super interesting topic, and Garrett and I have talked about this a bit in the past, and I'm a former high school orchestra director and did commission a few pieces during my time, and it's one of those things that always seems so complicated, but it ended up, and I don't think it has to be, and it ended up not being as complicated as I thought, but it ended up being one of the most valuable experiences that I think the students walk out of, rather than playing something written by somebody who died a couple hundred years ago, you know, it's, it's really cool to actually bring the composer in and have that experience. It really brings the music to life. I think. 
Oh, it totally does. And I, one of the things that Arthur has taught me and the, you know, I used his model to create my own residency is that you're engaging with the ensembles in your backyard. Like Arthur said, there's all these groups and musicians where you actually are. You don't have to be in a big city. There's people who want to engage with composers and they want to make new music. They just don't know how. Mm -hmm. And so Arthur found a way to crack that nut. And so we're going to, we're going to share that with the world. Yeah, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's local. There's just there are huge yeah. local resources available to us as far as as far as ensembles and so forth. But even if you live someplace where it's a small town and there's no ensemble there, the world the way it is now, look at us right here. The world the way it is right now allows you to connect with people around the world. So you could still be a, a composer or artist in residence for an ensemble that, you know, it doesn't necessarily even need to be an orchestra or a band. It could be, a, you know, a small ensemble, a chamber ensemble uh, or a mixed ensemble that you happen to really like and you want to compose for those instruments or for those people. And so you can you can do that. So that's yeah, that's going to be one of our topics. I'm excited about that. Nice. Yeah, you you had asked Jason like what are people going to get out of it? And so we highlighted some topics, but I think if you come in with a, a spirit of wanting to learn, you could listen to a presentation on something that you're not interested in at all and you're still going to learn something that you can take away to improve your engagement with an audience, to build relationships, as Heidi said, to scale the relationships and the collaborations you're making. There's just going to be so much. And the ROI, the return on the investment is huge. Like we're not asking, uh, the ticket prices are, are minimal, really, uh, to get so much content. We're talking 35 hours worth of teaching, almost, that you can you can get out of it. Well, and I love that there is that you're going to have some breakout rooms and that and that kind of activity to be able to interact. <clears throat> because I mean, part of the the beautiful thing about something like this is the network that you are building, you know, and I, I don't know who said it, probably a lot of people, your network is your net worth. And I think that that's just so I might have taken that from your podcast, Garrett, sorry if I did. But <laughs> but I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's something I think about to this day, those relationships that I've built and how that sort of has led to the next opportunity, and the next opportunity. And when you get people that are curious, about this, which is, you know, people that are going to be signing up for this, that's, that's what they're going to be. It's just, it's a beautiful thing that, um, that it's nothing but positive, I think. Yeah. And I, I want to point out also, a lot of times people will look at these different things and they'll think, well, I'm not in this situation or I'm not in that situation. And the great thing, I mean, the amazing thing I thought about what Garrett did last year single-handedly is he covered such a wide range of topics, but essentially all of them to some degree have have application to business it might not have application to your exact situation but if you go into it with that open mind and with the idea of here's somebody who's doing something with so for example with networking you know and you know i'm in a situation perhaps where i'm working for a large organization but how can i make that networking work for me or how can i make this fit my situation and the range of topics is huge like garrett was you know was mentioning just a few of the the ideas before but things that everybody has to deal with in one way or another when they are in the music business in whatever part of the music business they're in yes and the relationships, like you said, uh, the networking effect, Jason, is real. Like I, I'm still hearing from people who were impacted from last year's event because they might have connected with you, actually, or with Heidi or with Arthur and were, were with other musicians who are just attending through the social media platforms. And, and it's rewarding. Like to know that we're benefiting these people who are then impacting more people through the music they make, their teaching and so on. That's the, that's the goal is to make the world a better place. And we're giving some strategies so you can do that. You're taking me back to my, I remember Northwestern career day in like 1996 or something like that. And I was very much <laughs> planning on taking orchestra auditions. and I didn't think I needed to know anything about anything, but I, re I still remember some of those sessions, a uh, very, very different time. And in terms of technology and everything, but, but so much of what they talked about then I've ended up needing to use in my own life, you know, uh, much more than I thought. And so it's, yeah, it's, even if you think you're on a particular path, you never know, you never know what the future is going to bring. And these relationships you build they transcend the boundaries of whatever job you're in you know i've 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 been working with the same people i've had probably seven different employers still working with the same people you know over the years 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Garrett, let me ask you, maybe this is a complicated question. Might be too early in the morning for this, but like, okay. So you, I, I think a lot of, but I've heard people talk about this a lot. You know, you build something and then it's like a ridiculous amount of work. Like last year, I, I fair, we haven't talked about this specifically, but I can imagine you were busy putting this together. How do you take something that you've been doing on your own and divide it up? And again, this might be an impossible question, but like, like I've thought about that in my own life with the podcast and I've, you know, bring people on board, but like, how do you take something that you've been driving and uh, make it a team effort? Well, I can't say that I know um, <laughs> or that I've done it well, but I can tell you what I've done. Sure. Um, so I, first of all, I thought through who, who do I know who has unique skill sets that are different from mine, but also can get in, um, believes in the vision that I have for this product. And Arthur and Heidi were right there. They both bring some incredible skill sets to the table that are different from mine. And so one of the things I was trying to do was to shore up my weaknesses. I can't do it all on my own. And then I just let them kind of sit in their wheelhouse and take it from there. And we just started discussing, okay, well, how can we do this? So that that's kind of what I did. I was looking for um, people to compliment what I can do, but also people who are not afraid to push back. And we've had times when they're like, no, Gary, you really shouldn't, really shouldn't do this. And we, I need that, right? I don't have everything figured out and I'm, I'm fallible. So it's been really good to make this a team effort because I think the second iteration of the summit will be so much stronger for it. Well, you're somebody who has, I, when I think of someone who brings something to the world, who actually ships, you know, you're somebody that I put in that category and I can't wait because I thought the, I thought last year's was great. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, Arthur, let me ask you an impossible question just because I've got you all on the line here. Um, maybe it's not that impossible, but working with musicians and websites, uh, what are some of the mistakes you see? And, and you know, I kind of think of my websites as disasters myself. I, I don't, I certainly certainly don't have this figured out, but like, what are some of the common things or common like mindset challenges that, that musicians see or anything? You've probably run into some, some of the same roadblocks or. Oh, or... absolutely. And, and in fact, this was my topic in the last Ultimate Music oh. Business Summit <laughs> was websites for, for musicians. And, you know, generally the, the mistakes before you get to having a website, the mistakes that people make are thinking that it's a really complicated, horrible, terrifying thing that they that they just can't do because it's too much for them. Because the world now has got to the point where technology is makes everything so easy that you can have a website very, very easily through, through a bunch of services. Uh, I work with WordPress websites myself. WordPress websites are really easy to use once you've had just a little bit of education. And there's a huge amount of education out on the internet. You can just go to YouTube and search for how to do stuff and it'll teach you how to do stuff right there. So that just that roadblock to doing it in the first place, to getting your website out there is, a, is kind of this mindset idea that people need to get past. It's it's not a, something that should be impossible. It's not something that should take 20 years to get a website live. Uh, not for not for somebody who just wants to have, for example, a you know, musician or an ensemble website. That's not something that should take that long to do. And then the other things that I would say are kind of standard mistakes are not providing any way for people to contact you uh, or not making it easy for them to contact you. And then things like having, you know, unclear information about what it is you do and how you do it and how they can get you to do it. So some kind of a call to action and a really good description of what it is that you do and what makes you special from the other people who are doing the same thing. And that, you know, that particular approach of put what you want to get and who you want to have contact you, you know, you know foremost on your website, that's your strategy. That's a big thing that people miss. They'll have really nice artistic websites, but there's no contact information, no links. You have to figure out how to get to the contact page or there's some experiential thing where you have to move your mouse to a certain spot to be able to get in and stuff like that. All of those are great for an art performance, but they're not good for a website. You want it to be straightforward. You want it to give the information upfront of who you're looking for, and what it is that you can provide them and how they can have you do it. Can I piggyback on that? Oh. Because this is, Arthur and I have actually discussed this quite a bit, but 
your bio on your website. Musician bios are sometimes the worst because they basically take their CV and they put it into prose form. And I'm constantly telling people that your bio, and Arthur was saying this too, should tell people what it is you do and why you do it. Why should I care about what it is you're doing? I don't like if I really want to know, then I'll download your CV and I'll learn who you studied with and who's performed your music. That's cool. That's great. Congratulations. But I don't care about your music yet. And so your bio and your website, as Arthur was saying, can communicate all of this. It gives the reasons why people should listen and engage and uh, collaborate and hire you to perform or compose or whatever it is you do. I remember, I, I, th I think the older I get, the shorter my bio becomes, which I think is a, is a good thing. I remember like, tr like trying to like divest myself of that horrible musician bio, listing every ensemble, and I, I, I rewrote it. I showed it to another musician, and they didn't really understand what I was trying to do. But I think that's so, I think that's so key. What do you do and why? You know, why does it matter to you? Heidi, you are somebody, I, get, I subscribe to a lot of email newsletters, and I subscri subscribe to a lot of podcasts. I'm one of those people. Um, but I always stop and read what I get sent from you and Garrett as well, by the way, I love, I love when, when I get your, your Friday emails, but, but uh, Heidi to, uh, and, and also uh, um, let me be a bad podcast or I'll ask a bunch of questions and you can just pick how to answer. Um, the, um, I also, I, I was, always, I was struck when I first discovered your podcast, how you seem to be very good at taking a platform like a podcast, um, and really like, like turning it into some sort of business opportunity. Um, so, I mean, how do you do what you do? Maybe that's the question I'm asking. Just talk about your process. Cause I, I mean, I, I find the way that you approach podcasting quite engaging. I find the way that you communicate in written form quite engaging. Um, talk about that. Sure. So I will say I am still a work in progress. My podcast is still a work in progress and my flute 360 show has evolved it was a dma thesis it was a hobby it was a cv builder and now it's amplifying a light onto my product services and offerings but more importantly through all of that i have always had the heart to serve i love serving people i love helping and connecting with them so perhaps the glimpse that you're getting about feeling connected to the text, feeling connected to the guests is because I really put my listener first. I wanna know who they are, what their pain points are, um, what their hopes and dreams are. So that way I can tap into their world. If I'm not resonating with them and connecting with them on a human level, then I've missed you know, the target. So that's my primary goal. And then through that, I always keep my eyes and ears open for opportunities. Do not, if you are a musicpreneur right now listening to this, do not leave money on the table. You have to be creative. You have to have those blinders a little bit wider just to see what's around you. Because like, look at this conversation right here. If you don't reach out and start building those relationships, how can anything scale for you and for them? And the second biggest nugget is find the win-win for everybody involved. So the one thing that I'm super proud of through Flute 360 is I have worked with over 16 different companies. Now that's not because I have a huge name. I'm just little old me, <laughs> Heidi, who's a cat mom, okay? It's because I saw opportunities. I reached out to people and I emailed the marketing department through Peabody, Haynes, Powell, et cetera. And they saw you know, an amazing platform to bring people together. It's all about community. So if you're gonna be doing the work, then you need to be really creative in how to fund your creative project, whether it's through donations, sponsorships, um, selling your own product services and offerings. There is so much opportunity out there. You just have to ask because the worst that can happen is that they say no. And that's okay, tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> So that's what I've learned through the podcast. That's who I serve, and that's my approach. 
it's a mindset that I think musicians, especially people with my background, the audition sort of path, you get used to like maybe get, you know, taking opportunities in that, but you don't realize you're not used to uh, offering yourself up in all these other ways, you know, but it's just amazing how much there is out there and whether it's from uh, Garrett, Heidi, Arthur, or anybody else involved in the summit. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I highly recommend checking out this event. I just think it's, it's really, uh, no matter what you're doing in your life and, and it, and you, you don't realize that you are a small business a lot of the time, but you really are like Garrett said, kind of at the outset, you know, I didn't realize I was running a small business for a long time. And then all of a sudden I realized, Oh, Hey, look at what I'm doing. I sort of embodied in the name of Garrett's podcast, portfolio composer. Um, Thank you all for chatting. Uh, I, I, I will link up uh, to Garrett, Heidi, Arthur. I'll link up to your respective sites. Obviously, I'll link up to uh, it's musicsummit.biz. Uh, you can get on the the newsletter. So, tickets will probably be available when I put this out, which will be uh, like a week or so from now. Um, anything else we want to get out here? I don't want to eat up your whole day, but I well, I could I could talk for a long time. So. <laughs> well, if if you're listening to this and you're interested in it at all, but you're, you're have specific questions. If you're saying this is a problem I have in my life, in my business, then, uh, use the contact page and let us know. Um, and if possible, we'll try to get something lined up to answer that for you, because this is not about us. This is about people like you who are listening and it, helping you do what you do. So if you know that you've got, as Heidi said, a specific pain point in your business, or as you're building your career, share that with us so we can help you do something about it. And let me throw in also that a lot of times people will think, well, right now I'm not in a business, so this doesn't apply to me. I'm, I'm an employee of a company or I'm a teacher at a school or whatever. You're still technically, you're a business, you're providing your services to the larger business. And this also gives you the opportunity if you plan in the future to pivot or to have some other sideline uh, or just to go, you know, to completely change your career in the future. All of these things that we're going to be going with, the, the topics are very broad and, and very all encompassing. And really, anybody can use them. We've said that kind of repeatedly, but they can be applied to all sorts of different situations. And you don't have to just be a solopreneur or a musicianpreneur, I think is what. <laughs> But any of those things, but they all apply to people, no matter what your situation you're in, mindset, money, networking, all these different things are really useful for people in a wide variety of, of situations, not necessarily just people who think of themselves as being entrepreneurs. Yeah. Though I do want to encourage people to realize what it is they're selling. I agree with everything Arthur's saying. I'm just going to add on top of that. When you're an employee, what you're doing is you're selling your time for money, your, your services. But when you're running your business, you're selling your services and your products. And that's what Heidi was talking about. And that requires the mindset, mindset shift that Arthur was referencing. And so it, no matter what, as Arthur said, I want to affirm this, these things apply. And if you want to succeed and climb the ladder within whatever business that you're currently an employee, that's fine. You can still apply these same principles. And yeah, I'm sorry if I just repeated Arthur's words all over again, but I just, I, I believe it so much. And even if you think you're in a nice, stable job and you don't have to think about building a platform, remember 2020, everybody? <laughs> it's it's the, the people with the most secure, seemingly secure jobs, you know, in, in any industry really, but certainly music, you know, it's probably a good idea to have a couple different skills that you've been developing. And, you know, rare, like the, I'll, I'll end my rant with this, but like a, 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 most orchestra players I know, if you take sort of my world orchestra, Performs, most orchestra players have something else that they're very passionate about besides just playing in the orchestra. So think about what you do and think about if is is this something that maybe you would want to do on the side or as an independent product or service or something like that. And I mean, this is the sort of event that's really great for just brainstorming. I think a lot of people kind of have like a vague idea of something that and they might not realize how to turn that into something really interesting like I never thought I'd be doing this crazy podcast for 14 years, but here I am, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, check it out folks. Uh, music summit.biz Garrett, Heidi, Arthur pleasure. 
Thanks again for checking this out. We got links to the event in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.